why a children's book? I, you mentioned before this was a passion of yours. You write a children's book. Yes. So I do want to empower the younger generation, but who's reading it to them? The parents. Yeah. Older oh, people. So you're hitting both. Both. You're hitting uh, both demographics. The same demographics. Time. And how many adults, regular average, adults. read books a year? Rub it in, raise your hand. <laughs> oh, I don't. I mean, I've read a full book this year. Okay, I read this book. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hey there, welcome to the Gluten-Free Organic Thoughts Podcast, where you are encouraged to express your natural thoughts and views through casual, meaningful conversations that hopefully can lead to learning and understanding new perspectives. To find out more info, visit www.gfothoughts.com. Now, here are your hosts, Michael Wong and Robert Din. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another great episode of Gluten-Free Organic Dots Podcast. My name is Michael Wong, and today we have a return guest, Haley Ego. Welcome back. Welcome back to a great episode. So guess what? This time around, we're gonna. she's going to have some surprises for us. I'm pretty sure she's been up to no good, right, Hillary? <laughs> well, thank you for having me back. And uh no good i don't know how i would define that but <laughs> <laughs> but and don't forget obviously robert always with me how's it going everyone yeah hillary oh, it's uh it's been a little while since you've been back on we're excited to get to uh, see what's going on September? yeah uh, you were episode 11 i went back and 11 checked. Yeah. Episode 11. We so are it w- we're on like 30 something now. So like 32. Oh, I believe this is going to be 32. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's been a while. It's been almost 7 months now. 8 months almost going to it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Almost a year, Robert. A year your anniversary is coming up soon. So. Coming up soon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start, uh Hillary, yep. what are you drinking? I have some tea in my reusable cup. Oh, nice. nice. I got some tea as well. I got some matcha tea this time around. Oh, wow. See, I'm drinking yeah. I'm drinking uh, coffee. Wait, coffee. what time is it there? <laughs> it is 7 o'clock. Uh, but yeah. Are you going to be working all night? Uh, Maybe not all night, but I'll probably be work- working a lot tonight. Uh, it's one of those weekends. I, I try, it is it's because week. Mike makes me work all night long for this podcast. That's what he does. <laughs> so everyone can blame Mike. It's fine. I'll take the blame for that. You know, we just want to, we just want good quality for the listeners. Okay, all right. Dang it! Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Hillary. So, um, also, for those also who... before everything, uh, yeah. this when this comes out, it's going to be Chinese New Year. So oh, happy true. Chinese New Year to everyone here, yes. to everyone out there. Yeah, and it's your year, guys. I You're know. the ox. That's Is right. It, isn't it an unlucky year when it's your year? I'm not sure yeah, about that. You're to be supposed honest. to wear red to. Um, I wore red today. The evil spirits. I and would. if you don't want people to know your age by wearing red out, then you wear red underwear. So really, is that how it works? Ah, I don't care about how old people think I am. To be honest with you, I still get ID right now. So you still get ID. <laughs> I still get ID still. So wow, I think especially I- more with a mask on, they actually ID me more. Oh, I don't go anywhere where they ask for ID anymore. <laughs> like, I'm always inside. <laughs> I don't see anyone, so I don't know when they would ask me for ID. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so happy happy chinese new year's and uh happy valentine's day also the That's same true. weekend yeah so, yeah all right so hillary tell us a little bit more about yourself for those who have not met, you know seen your first episode or just first time listening to you so just a little bit of background and let us know what you've been up to great well thank you again for having me on um a lot has happened in the last what, seven months we said that I was on in September. Uh, the first noticeable one was I chopped off all my hair and donated it. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> nice. wow. And then uh, the next one I'll go over, I'm going to talk about a children's book that I just published. And I'm really excited to share the process that I went through and the inspiration behind that. So to start, I'm going to just go over a little bit more of my background and how I ended up choosing the topic and theme for the book that I, that I wrote. Uh, so I... Um, a sustainability nerd. I love the earth 
so much. And I love she's it. not lying, by the way, everybody. She's not she's lying. Not lying at all. <laughs> yeah. And I will do you know anything I can to help protect it and make sure that we have enough resources for us now, but also for future generations to come. Which is any generations stuff. to come, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which yes. is uh, you know basically the definition of sustainability. Mm -hmm. That would also started when I was a uh, young girl, I saw my mom accidentally throw, or you know, my aunt wanted to recycle something. My mom said, I don't have time, just throw it in the trash. And I was like, no, I'm gonna recycle it. So I But you did, know, mom tell you that she didn't have time yes, to do it. Which is where a lot of things wow. come from. Convenience is really hurting That's us. That's true. That is true though, yeah. So I ended up, you know, later on realizing the story is where it all started. That was the spark that I had. But it wasn't until I was in high school and I watched An Inconvenient Truth in my civics class. And Ooh. I really realized the impacts of global warming on our, on, our, on our planet. And I felt like really empowered to be able to do something about it myself. So my best friend and I, we started an environment club where we founded our recycling program and uh, did a variety of other projects throughout the community. And then I found out that I could study this in college and make this a career. So I went on to study environmental studies at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where I was also a swimmer. So I swam for UNLV all four years. I was a sprint freestyler. And during that free time- Free school over there, free school. You know, the scholarship, you know? <laughs> well, I was actually a walk-on, so you have to- Oh, oh wait, they, 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 you had to walk on? Oh. Uh, so you're still recruited, okay. uh, but you yeah. are recruited to swim on the team, but without a scholarship, but you can earn it. Got so it. over time, as you improve, then you earn your scholarship, which I was fortunate enough to be able to do so. Nice. nice. So, um, uh, you know, during my time at UNLV, I was involved with different uh, clubs and organizations throughout our campus. And I also realized that I needed to get a niche, you know, something that I was specialized in in the environmental field. So I was lucky enough to find uh, the water resources management program at UNLV where I got a master's in water resources management, really focused on climate change and water conservation. Mm -hmm. And then- uh, why, why did you need a niche? Why water? Yeah. Why, also why water? Why yeah. water? And why do, why do you need a niche yeah. and why water? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So for the environmental field, typically on a, on a sustainability team, uh, let's say a corporation has a large sustainability team. They have someone that specializes in energy, someone that specializes in waste, someone that specializes in uh, supply chain and procurement. You know, maybe they have someone that specializes in water. Uh, you know, the list goes on. So, I felt this connection with water. Definitely, maybe it was my swimmerness in me, but also being that could be it too. Yeah. <laughs> also being in the Southwest and really learning. I took a couple classes where the importance of water systems and water conservation, especially and dry arid regions throughout the yeah, year was really important. So it was just something that really I felt drawn to and was excited to explore and be yeah. able to create that. And we, that. Especially and we knew water in, survive too, to be honest. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially water in California like, where like there's there's like no water, <laughs> like it's a drought all the time, right? There's no rain, yeah, no for rain. sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I finished grad school and I ended up leaving Nevada for the Bay Area where I got my first job uh, working for a local community college district and implementing a variety of sustainability programs, um, whether that was their water conservation programs or um, you know, starting their composting program and increasing, increasing recycling efforts, um, a number of programs. And then from there, I actually ended up um, wanting to hone my skills in communications and outreach. And so I ended up working for the Waste Hauler in San Francisco, where I did a lot of cool presentations and on-site consultations with different businesses to really learn how to communicate um, with, with others. And then I yeah, recently- she came to my she came to my, my <laughs> company and, uh, and did a presentation with, for all of my coworkers and stuff. It was great. Let me ask you this, Hillary. What was one of the challenges you went through when you did those kind of presentation communication? Like, like, how did you know people were actually listening to you? I'm just curious. Like, you know, it's interesting that you would think, oh, this is, it's a really boring topic, but it's actually something that a lot of people were really engaged in, and I always found myself not having to fight for their attention. That's they good. Were all That's really engaged good. and really wanted to learn more. I think people they know that recycling and composting is important, but they don't mm -hmm. know why. And so I was able to really connect those two things and empower them to be able to succeed. And that was something I really enjoyed doing. So like, how do you, let me ask you this. I mean, this make it a little up topic. So what if someone asks you like, 
obviously they probably have a lot of questions, right? For example, they probably poked out, hey, you know, how do you recycle plastic, but because it costs you guys more than right now to recycle plastic, things like that. Like, is it still useful, right? Because at the end of the day, people will question that. And you know how the social media, the stuff out there, the kind of counters certain things. Like, how do you, how do you guys, how do you guys prep for that? There's definitely a lot of good tools out there um, yeah. to discuss that and you know research and articles, but the best way to combat plastic waste is just to not use it, refuse it. There you and go. so yeah. you know use your reusable cups instead. So uh, the the company I worked for, we had a really strong emphasis on being able to reuse the durable items such as this instead of disposable plastic items. Nice. So that's always kind of the go-to. You really want to encourage people to do that. Let's uh, taking a step back, like at the community college uh, that you're working for, like what kind, what kind of projects would you be working on, um, in that type of environment? I worked on a lot of things, but and there's also <laughs> a team of people too, which I was very fortunate to have. So we had some of uh, my colleagues specialized in our energy projects or our solar projects, uh, different building construction projects that were going to be LEED certified, um, energy management systems to help make sure we can identify energy efficiency opportunities in our buildings, uh, HVAC systems and learning about those. So this was housed in the facilities department. So I did a lot of facilities work, mm, okay. um, you know, implementing our water, water efficiency program and our zero waste plan and authoring those two items. Also, the cool thing about working at a community college um, was being able to work with students. So we were able to utilize the campus as a living lab and work with students on uh, and they have the energy to do it. projects. They have uh, the energy to do it probably too. They have the energy. Well, yeah. And, you know, it was exciting <laughs> to, uh, to teach them too. Yeah. And they were, they're like sponges. They're excited to learn and they want to implement real life projects on the campus. And we were able to provide that to them. Yeah. And also I managed um, a couple student interns and worked on projects with them. Yeah, it was, it was nice. a lot, but I, I really enjoyed it and I'm, I'm grateful for the experience, which is kind of also where it got, gets to where I am now. I uh, work in local government, um, implementing a local climate action plan with a variety of projects and programs, um, you know, around energy efficiency, water conservation, uh, zero waste electric vehicles. So right now, are you not niche anymore? Are you just a little bit more broad? I'm a little more broad, but I definitely have specialties in certain areas, but yeah. I definitely enjoy working on a variety of projects. Gotcha. And I, uh, I definitely feel fortunate to have those specialties in my back pocket. So if the questions come up, I definitely- You're ready for that, for sure. Yeah, you yeah. have the answers. Yeah, for sure, yeah. So are you, having, are you having more fun now? Yeah, I mean, I think every job I've had is fun. <laughs> one is more fun than the other. And I really think it's because I really love what I do. Yeah. And I'm very passionate about the sustainability field. And I also feel very lucky to be a part of it as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Which makes sense. Like, I mean, obviously, we can tell by your passion. Trust me, every time I visited you, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will never forget when... Um, because for, for everyone that doesn't know, Robert and I were roommates and yeah. Yeah. Robert first moved in and he was like, hey, where do I put this? And it was maybe like- <laughs> Because, because uh, to, to premise <laughs> Everybody's this, compost, right? okay? Everybody's no, 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 to premise, right? Like there was no trash can in the house, like no trash can at That's all. That's true. It was no um, trash can at all. So, and I'm coming from Florida where like, oh, it's either like recycling, recycle your plastic and glass. Otherwise it goes in the trash. Right. Yep. So then I was like looking around. I was like, I don't see a trash can. What do I <laughs> like? Where do we where are we putting this stuff? <laughs> like, yeah. And so then I said, oh, put that in the compost. And you just stared at me blankly. <laughs> and said, What's compost? <laughs> Everything's <Yeah>. compost. <laughs> like I learned yeah, I had no like, idea. <laughs> but it's OK. You learn quickly. So, you know, it was a win in the end because I was able to <laughs> you on what goes there i don't know i, I feel like everything's compost now after i learned from you okay anything that's wet compost done that's not true not everything <laughs> anything that touches food is not anything so i recommend you first visit your <laughs> or your uh, local city or county's websites to really figure out what can that's go true. in because every city is different mm, true. Um, if you're in california and you will be able to compost or you know put yeah. Uh, in the organics in a in the green bin. You would think that was 
you let me ask you this though you, you would think they would standardize that as like a federal thing you know to make make it easy for everybody right yeah so it's a uh, the local thing i get it state law in california yeah. coming up really soon really and, yes Ooh. and i can only hope that it will like, spread to like others. it's states rights okay some states have the right to like not compost Okay. I get it, but I, <laughs> but, but I feel like it's also, also a budget thing. To be honest, too, I think it has a, it has to do with money as well, though. I, I don't think it's just suddenly just a right thing. I feel like, uh, I and I get it. Don't get me wrong. Like it depends. I also feel like facility wise, uh, having the team ready, things like that, t- may take time and money to get that ready. Well, it's possible. Green yeah, jobs. Yeah. I agree. I completely agree. hundred percent agree. Yeah. Make it work. Yeah. All right. So Hillary, tell us what have you been up to. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, I also, sorry, let me back up. Okay. I moved down to San Diego from San Francisco where Robert still is. And, mm-hmm. She left. Uh, me. So I've been Abandoned. busy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy exploring San Diego or what I can of it, which is basically I just go to the beach all the time. <laughs> and, Literally every day. Which is great. I love it. And <laughs> the other thing I worked on was I finally accomplished a goal of something I've wanted to do for a long time, which is author a children's book. And nice. so my goal for the book, uh, and this has been something I've been telling friends. Right here. Oh. I got it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's it. It's called How I Saved the Earth. How I Saved and the Earth. I have it here too. And my goal and mission for How I Saved the Earth is to really just educate young people and, you know, children to be able to be empowered to save the earth. So there's tips and tricks in here. I won't nice. show everyone what's inside. Uh, but the cool thing is, is not yeah. only is there a tip on how to save the world, it's also the impact of that tip on how it impacts the planet in a positive effort change. So, so it's, let okay. me ask you this though. Why a children's book? Is, is that, you said you mentioned before, this was a passion of yours. Did you write a children's book? So you said? Yes. So I do want to generate, or I do want to empower the younger generation, but who's reading it to them? The parents. Yeah. Older people. So you're hitting both, both. You're hitting uh, both demographics at the same time. Demographics. And how many adults, regular, average, read books a year? Okay, you're you're out of. (laughs) Probably didn't raise your hand. (laughs) Oh, I don't. I mean, I've read a full book this year. Okay. I read this book. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I've read a full right. book this year, so you can't say anything. So Robert read Hillary's book. Good, congrats. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. See, you can cross off your goal for the year to read a book. Okay. Um, but you know, it's kind of also something that um, Al Gore has said when I attended his climate reality trainings. You know, we're not going to save the world. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Which you should also attend. You can sign up for them. They're free. They're what are the call? Just wondering. Uh, the climate reality training corpse. I think I should know this, mm-hmm. but Al Gore climate reality training. Look it up. There you go. All right, so keep going. So you said you were in power. Before. Uh, so during his trainings, uh, something he always mentioned at because um, he gives this really great presentation, and I'm at reality place. leadership court. Yes. Oh, I should have known the name of that. Sorry, oh, Al Gore. <laughs> Don't be disappointed. But so sure. this all started because after an inconvenient truth came out, which is essentially like a presentation showcasing the impacts of global climate change. Yep. Uh, he was interviewed by a journalist who said, you know, you have this great book and movie. So what are you going to do now? And he said, I'm going to teach people to give this presentation because we're not going to change the world by having people read scientific journals and reports. We're going to change the world by having these one-on-one conversations with people, with your your family, with your neighbor, with your friends. That's how we're going to spread Spread. environmental awareness. And that's how we're going to save the world. And so that's something that I've always took to heart with me. And that's why uh, I make it very known to all my family and friends my passion for the environment because i want to continue to spread very well known for sure (laughs) (laughs) that environmental awareness and this is just another outlet of me doing this is to have this book and be able to share with you know families okay so before we get into the detail of the book right let me ask you this though like uh, obviously you wanted to write a children's book right and 
you were inspired by that movie and by the you know by uh, Argo. It looks like for you know for sure. And let me ask you this: like, how do you know which topic? To, like, how do you like write a story? Like, how do you know what storyline you want to write? Because you, it can go from anywhere. You know, like mm-hmm. you can have a hundred page, like a one hundred sure. or like a twenty page children book. You know, like. Yeah. So this was not like an overnight thing. I've been working towards this effort for a long time. I think even a couple years ago, I wrote an outline of what I wanted and I would slowly pick at it maybe every so often. And my goal was to actually write a series of books since I was going to write a book on water, a book on waste, a book on energy. That would be smart. Yeah. Right. And so that was like my first goal. And then um, once I sat down and realized, you know, I really want to get this done like this year, like this is my time to get this done. I was like, you know, it doesn't make sense to start with 10 books. I should start with one. And then Mm. from there I can scale out eventually. So I really decided to focus all my efforts in on that one book. And then it all came together where I was like, this just makes sense. And everything came a lot quicker and I was happy I was able to get it done. So the steps I took for that, um, first, you just need to write your outline of, you know, the themes that you want. And then from there, you just kind of doodle out your script. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can go back to it later. And then you also need to think illustrations. And this is where somewhere I got really scared. So first I asked my younger sister to illustrate and she said, no. She said no. <laughs> she said no. no. Wow. Damn, your I own family. She, maybe she regrets it now. I don't know yet. <laughs> I know. Yeah, super famous. And then she's going to be like, oh, no, I could have okay. been, been this artist here. Wait, wait, just show her on Amazon once you have one, a thousand reviews for five star. <laughs> <laughs> you screenshot that, text her that, you know, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I did this without you, by the way. She's, she's putting her other talents to good use. So, <laughs> I, well, I I, so hang on. So before we move on from that, right, you mentioned about outlining the book. So... I've actually been in progress to try to write something myself, but I never, I still am struggling on what to even write. I, you know, so like outline's nice, but if assuming that you know what you want to write, like, yeah. so like you knew the topic obviously, but how do you figure it out? Hey, do I do a storytelling type of deal from a third person view? Do I do it from like a, uh, you know, like almost like a cartoonish? Do I do like, you know, how? Just the style, like how do you knew what you want to do? Yeah, so I had written maybe. After I did the outline, I probably wrote like 10 different versions of, of really? the book. I had it being where it would follow this little animal and a little story about how, you know, it would do this and this action <laughs> tip. But then I couldn't decide what animal I wanted and what to name it. I got stuck on like what to name the character. And then I was like, you know what, maybe I'll do a custom book where I'll be able to have you know, the printer be able to just print their, you know, the child's name on the book. And then I was like, this is also getting way too complicated. (laughs) That's definitely complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I just kept thinking about like illustrations and I was like, how am I going to hire someone for this? And how are they going to be able to tell the story? And there's going to be so much back and forth. So I really basically just tried to simplify it as much as possible. Yep. And so I kind of, did the opposite so I stopped my script and then I started focusing on my illustrations <laughs> uh gotcha and then you worked around the story on that a little bit correct yes gotcha so, so now that. walk us through the process of finding a good illustrator like, are you, obviously your sister said no to you then <laughs> right so I also wanted to have something that wasn't too complicated and I had this vision of also creating um, merchandise or like stickers uh, or something with it you want to brand it obviously that makes sense yeah, yeah. so I thought of, you know, what kind of illustrations are out there that I like? And so I was Googling children's books and what, um, you know, also children's book illustrators to see kind of styles that are out there. And the only style of illustration that I actually really enjoyed and that stood out to me was like the Japanese kawaii style, which is actually what my books are. Yeah. I have the stickers right in front of me. I put in my water bottle. (laughs) This is my 32 ounce water that I drink almost every day, every day. Yeah. Why haven't you sent me a picture of this yet? Oh, did I not send this picture of you? Oh, I'll send it to you. I'll send a little quick video of it. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, so that was something I found where I was like, I love the kawaii style, you know, being half Japanese. And I just love little characters and they smile and they make you smile. <laughs> and that's exactly what I wanted when someone saw the book. I wanted to be like, oh, how cute they're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
that's how I, I chose them. So then I started thinking, okay, what are the, what characters do I want to be portrayed in the book based on the tips that I provide? Got so it. I have eight little characters. I have four of them printed on stickers. So you might see what the four are. So I have yep. like the water. Oh, I the have earth. the other three. Oh, yes. There you go. The tree. And there's a couple yeah, the more tree. in the book, which <laughs> maybe I'll make yeah. stickers for those in the future. Yep. Um, so once I decided what uh, kawaii characters I wanted to create, then I wrote the script for it. And then the script still went through many iterations of it. I, you know, read it with a couple people and they all provided feedback to where I maybe listened to them, maybe didn't. Yep. <laughs> it's okay to hear feedback. I mean, it's up to you to take it or not. So that was fine. That makes yeah, sense. exactly. Yeah. I mean, everyone always had a good point. So yeah. I definitely yeah. took it what I could. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Have you read it in front of a, a library for full kids here? It, it is 2021 right now at the beginning. That's true. Where... You can do Zoom call. It's COVID right I, now, Mike. Like, you, can do, you can't you do, can do this zoom stuff. Once. You can do Zoom. Mike doesn't I, worry about COVID. He's like, yeah, this isn't a thing. I, that's true. I forgot. I'm like, you know, we're in Florida. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Florida, <laughs> Florida, they don't care. They're all open, wide open. Man. No, but I, so I, I know that they do have some readings. Some library has to, like, online virtual readings and stuff with that still, though. So. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm still kind of putting together the my marketing strategy for it. Nice. I really don't have a broad marketing strategy. I just right now have it kind of organic word of mouth where I'm sharing it with my family and friends on social media uh, and they're sharing it with their family and friends, which is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And I think I've, I've sold, I think like 60 books now, which nice. is really exciting. nice. That's I, don't awesome. know, I don't know all these people that are buying them. And I think it's working where my organic marketing is. Oh, that's awesome. And obviously get on TikTok for that. Let me tell you the people, <laughs> There's a lot of mothers out there. I'm telling you that once. Right. Oh. So you know, I definitely envision it expanding in the future. But for now, I'm just yeah. trying to get in the groove of it as well. Well, you're trying to do build your brand with that around, and with, you know, try to use marketing to expand your brand. I get that, and right. I mean, I feel I feel like that's a little. I mean, obviously, the book will sell itself. It's you know, it's very cute. It's super you know, straightforward. And one of the things is that. You know, brand. When it comes to branding, you already know your demographic you want to target, which is great. I feel like most of the time, most people don't know what they want to target, and that's the hardest part. So mm -hmm. now that you know, it's just at the end of the day, so how are you going to execute the marketing piece of it, and uh, you know, you go from there. But I feel like you have a definitely great foundation to start with, though. So for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, and so. But show your sweater, by the way. Show your swags. Oh, yeah. You show me the so swags. I also have swag, guys. <laughs> I have a sweatshirt. This is my embroidered earth. There and we go. You can find this on my Etsy shop. So I have an Instagram page um, at How I Save the Earth. Yeah, it's gonna be above us right here. So I don't know. Yep. yep. And then I also have an Etsy, which is also How I Save the Earth, is the Etsy shop name. And so you can find this there. You can find my stickers on there. And then with every sticker purchase, you'll also get a free gift, which I have in front of me, which is a postcard. And on the back, it includes uh, a little message like how I save the earth, one, two, three. And you can write down three things that you do to save the earth and send it to a family member or a friend. You know, it's a nice little hello, especially during these uh, COVID times. times. Yeah. Also, you're continuing to spread the message on how I save the earth and, you know, provide environmental tips to other people. So this comes with your sticker orders. And then I also have hats. Here's Wait, you got hats? Nice. Oh, yeah. I have a hat. There's a couple other things on there. There's a canvas tote. There's a kid's sweatshirt, kid's shirt. There's t-shirts. And... Do you have a koozie? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. Match but also, two. you know, I, I really struggled with this because yeah. merchandise is just more stuff. And it I is. don't... Yeah, I feel like it's kind of intuitive in a sense, right? Because you, you're going against, little... yeah, you're going against your mind, like. Right, and so I was, you know, I was thinking, like, does it make any sense to do this? But I thought about it more, and I, I feel, I really believe that, uh, because these items are can are continuing to spread environmental awareness, and that's yep. the mission and goal of them, and it's also going to help 
spread the message of the book and lead people to the book. It really comes down to educating and empowering people. And I hope that people, when they see my little earth on, on items, that they can relate to that. I actually struggled the same way when I was picking packaging for my side business. I was like, I need something that's actually, you know, recyclable because you can pick plastic stuff easily and it's cheap to do that. And I ended up going to like uh, a, a, t- a typical type of uh, recycle box where you can make it white as, and then you can make it glossy. And mm-hmm. it was definitely better for the environment. Like at the end of the day, they're going to throw it away, right? I might as well just make it, you know, something that's, it, and it was a struggle to find a good packaging company yeah. that did that. So I, I, it's just making those kind of decisions, especially like, you know, you, when you're going forward, right? When you make, when you start making maybe different swag, things like that, but you, you're going to think twice, like, hey, I want to make sure that this aligns with my theme, with my brand. And I, and, and I think that's definitely something that's, you, it's going to keep happening no matter what, though, I feel like. Right. So I think right now I'm just starting off. I think hopefully in the future, I'll be able to find the right vendors for things. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the next time I'm on your show in seven months, I'll, my empire will... There you go. <laughs> Expanded, yeah. <laughs> and we Thanks. can talk about, you know, how my merchandise is doing better things for the earth. And right now it's just really focused on the message. So yeah. Um, that's well, let, me, okay. let me ask you this. So, so where people can find this book right now? The program for your, your book. Oh, for my book. Yes. Oh, yes. So I highly recommend self-publishing. So self-publishing is where you don't need to go through a publisher and mm-hmm. you can go through a company where they have a list of distributors and all you have to do is uh, create your profile, um, purchase your ISBNs yep. through the US Library of Congress, right? Yep. <laughs> yes. And then uh, you know, attach that to your book and then you upload your book. And then from there, you just let it go. <laughs> And let it, it fly just let it fly wait so, yeah. so when and, 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 like i just pressed like you know published and a couple days later it was on amazon like how cool nice. is that? so okay before we get to that right so let's talk about the illustration walk us through the yeah. process of a couple steps yeah so walk us through the process of how you illustrated the book and the picking hey this is the right person to get illustrate the book to for me did right. you ask so, for samples like uh, so i have zero drawing skills mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes i'm here here, here. Cheers. <laughs> cheers to that i you know really struggled with how i was going to even communicate what i wanted <laughs> and so what i did was i actually put together a pinterest page or a pinterest board of ideas ah, of nice. my characters that i liked and also illustrations of things like little earths or uh, trees and then, you know, different types of kawaii faces that you can add on top of it, just so they kind of can get a vision of what I, what I had in mind. So then I decided to uh, go to Fiverr, Fiverr.com, mm-hmm. and I was able to just Google kawaii illustrations. And there's so many talented artists on there that pop up. And all you have to do is just look through all theirs and they have samples of the work that they've done for other clients in the past. You can read through their reviews. So... I probably looked at maybe a, a dozen different uh, artists and yeah. I messaged an artist and I just told, told them, you know, my concept and my ideas and yep. asked if this is something they can do. And they said, yep, totally. And a couple days later, I got my first iteration back and then I asked for a couple edits and then I loved them. So did you end up getting just individual characters or did you end up telling them, hey, this is the page, page one, page two? Like each of so them. I just got the individual characters okay. and then I'll go into the next step of how yeah. I put the spread together. So going, um, when you're self-publishing, they ask for it to be in a certain format and okay. typically you have to Makes do that sense. formatting in Adobe Illustrator yeah. and I don't have Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> And so I was like, oh, God, there must be someone that I can hire to do this for me. A graphic designer. <laughs> exactly what I did. I went on Fiverr and I just typed in like children's book, like graphic designer. Uh, yeah. Or no, um, illustrator, probably like perhaps. book editor kind of thing. Yeah. I forgot. And there's so many people that do yeah. this and they just package your book for you. So I sent them a Google file. I had my pages like uh, in a slide yeah. and I put some colors on the pages and I put my character on one side and then my text on the other and you know same thing mess- message uh, you know 
the person and I said, hey, this is my concept. Here's a link to my page. Um, is this something you can put together? And then also I said, I don't really know like the characters or the font to use. So if you have any recommendations for those, I would greatly appreciate yeah. that. <clears throat> and because, you know, they do this all day long. So they're of course, they've had the experience. So yeah. yeah, right. And so a couple of days later, I got my first version back and it was just beautiful. <laughs> I, love it. I love the colors that they chose. I love the font that they chose. And it was just, it was perfect. And then I just added a couple more things. He gave me some tips on um, things I needed to work on prior to uploading in, into, uh, into Ingram Spark. And yep. that was it. And Make it sound so easy to write a book, by the way. No. You know, it, it, looking back <laughs> no on it, it, it was easy. And if anyone ever wants to do it, I highly encourage you to. The thing that took the longest was just learning about this process. Um, yeah. And I guess I could have watched some YouTube videos <laughs> to learn more, but I just kind of dove right into it myself. Yeah. And so it was a lot of reading and a lot of just looking at things. At first, I was like, I'm going to go like the publishing route. And yeah. I ha I wrote like the the letter that you have to write to, like, to publishers, yeah, to a million publishers, and I like yeah. spent a whole night writing this letter, and then the next day I was like, why did I do this? Like I should just self publish. Yeah. So you know, it was a lot of like just going through the motions, and that's what took the most time. So let me ask you this though, like you know, once you had the final draft, right? How many people read it before you say, okay, this is good enough, I'm gonna publish this? Yeah. So I was really nervous to have people read it. So I think I had just a couple of family members read it and that's about it. Yeah. And I was concerned that if I had more people read it, then I, there would just be too many edits to where I would feel discouraged. And I uh, felt good with where it was. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. This will just be my first one. If I don't like it, I can always make a second one. And or you can always update. Yeah, yeah. or update it. Or, yeah. you know, I just figured uh, my goal is to get this out there. I'm going to go yeah. for it. I think it's in a good place. And so I went for it. And like, I think that's gonna be that like a, hard. gonna be like Hillary's textbook, like version yeah. version two, version three, version four. Well, remember my original vision was to have you know serious. One, she might have a serious <laughs> yeah, one serious. on each topic, yeah. and so eventually that is the goal to have yeah. you know one on transportation, one on water, one mm -hmm. on weight. She's gonna solve it by the time she comes back on. She probably have another second part, second book. Maybe. <laughs> She'll have all ten out. Maybe. Now I'm gonna make that a goal. <laughs> like I'll have one done every month or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, for the pro the way you describe the process, it sounds like you had a decent experience that you and you learned a lot, obviously. And um, I, I, I don't know. For me, I still struggle right now just getting my outline correctly. But I also that's part of it because I maybe I don't know what I really want to like. I'm not 100 percent sure what I want to write is the right thing. Like, how, how do you knew that's the right thing? Obviously, you want to do something with the environment, but like. Once you picked the illustration, you decided to change the story around, looks like it. And you went back and did you go back and forth? Like, no, I don't like the storyline. Yep. Me, like, <laughs> what was the struggle? Like, you know, like. Um, I think the struggle was so the hardest part of environmental awareness, um, you know, you can tell people all day long to recycle, but if you don't tell them the importance of recycling, it's, you, you know, you it's lose pointless. that. It's, yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. so the hardest part was summarizing the why. And I was trying to use not as many technical terms and- It's this children's book, by the way, so, you know, I get it. It's a kid's book. <laughs> use terms that I think can be relatable. And I remember uh, I read it to my brother and he was like, Hillary, you need to add the why. Like kids always ask why. They do and always so, ask why, that's for sure. sure. And so you need to be ready to answer that. And so just put it in the book. And so <laughs> I had, you know, I basically like wrote this like long explanation of the why and I just shortened it and shortened it and shortened it until I got it to be about a sentence or two to where I can edit. I, I feel like when you write a kid's book, you have to be so efficient with your wordings. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to nitpick the hell out of it. What does that mean, mommy? Yeah. You know, like, you know, why is that? Like I, you, I feel like that that delivery message is just much, I feel like that's much harder than it seems to be, you know, so. Right, so, you know, there, those are definitely things that I thought of and, you know, I don't know if I got it perfect, but I got it to where, you know, I, I think it's the best it could be and hopefully one day I can write another version, but I'm just happy that it's already out there and I'm already getting feedback from people that I have my coworker, I gave a copy of uh, the book uh, for his two-year-old daughter. Nice. And he told me that he told me the next day, he said, 
oh my god she made me read it to her three times last <laughs> night <laughs> and then he said you know she's at the perfect age right now where she thinks it's funny when she plugs up the sink when we're brushing the teeth because yeah. I always tell her no and she's like ah plug it up and so now whenever she does this I say you know he tells her do you want to save water do you want to save the earth yeah and he reminds her of the book and she stops and I was like that's amazing <laughs> no they they actually that is amazing. they see it they see it's okay it's, it's a real thing right and they, yeah it's a lesson to be honest with you no and then he came into my office the other day uh, or actually this is yesterday mm. and he said uh, that his wife is really bad at turning off the lights when she leaves the <laughs> And so now the daughter will be like, oh, mom, you have to turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> the kids is calling out her parents now. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. And I mean, kids are the sponges. They, they learn fast. Yeah. So, you know, this you're making an impact already. That's that's, that's yeah. by the way, congratulations to but I feel I feel like that's more rewarding. I don't I obviously, you know, but once as soon as you know, once you get more feedback that you're making a positive impact already, you can tell that you are obviously, you know, I'm sure that that reward that that is in your feeling must be amazing. So it is, yeah. And you know, when I hear feedback and uh I have uh my Instagram page, how I save the earth, I'm asking yeah. people to send me pictures and tag. Uh, tag the book and tell me your feedback. I just get so excited because this is exactly why I wrote it. I wrote it yeah. with this mission to really you should, educate. You know what people. you should do? You know what you should do? You should ask your coworker to film the daughter saying stuff to your mom, the mom. <laughs> put, that in, put that on Instagram. It's hilarious. <laughs> put that on TikTok. Let me tell you. I mean that that, that would go viral viral for sure. <laughs> I can ask. Um, or you know, do you have any nieces or nephews you can ask to do that? I actually don't let me see. Friends. I'm trying to think. I'm I'm just trying to think. Anyone's under ten in the my family tree, like close by. I think you should just. You know. Also, I have in my. I think it might be my bio um, for the book. Is that this is also a great gift for your friends, your adult friends, who could use a little nudge. You know, if 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 you think that they're you know really bad and they always leave the water running and leave the lights (laughs) on. You should just I'm, you know, I'm leave that to my them as a gift for their coffee table, like a housewarming gift. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be like just there. Oh no, no, I'm getting this for all my friends who have kids already. They're all one year old right now. So <laughs> when the next when they turn one or turn two, I'm just gonna get that. That's what I'm gonna do. What's <laughs> your default gift? gift? It's a default gift right there. That's a default gift. All right. That's exactly what I was uh my <laughs> market is is really I want people to gift this book. It's it's not necessarily something you might want to get it for yourself, and I think that's great. But I think it's also a great. By the way, Mike got delayed. Just so you know. Oh. Yours got delayed. Oh <laughs> yeah. man. So Mike. Uh, so what's gonna happen is uh, when Matt, like Max, Sean's kid, turns like his next birthday or Christmas, like all of us are gonna send him <laughs> the same <laughs> gift, like the the same book. <laughs> well, I then I only hope that they can regift it to other people. There you go. Yeah, like twelve books. Um, I I gave <laughs> I, I gave Max already five, four or five books, right? No, three books, right? Three to four books, right? So, does he like them? I'm not sure. I need to ask Sean about that. It's like yeah. it's like it's like must think, not be a memorable book. One one of them is quantum physics for babies. <laughs> um, the other one is I think astrology for babies like that. see like uh, mike's mike's getting all these intellectual stuff i i get max like <laughs> basketball hoops and stuff <laughs> like you gotta get to the nba like that's that's where we're <laughs> headed and he, mike's over here like oh you go you can be smart uh, all right i guess listen if, if sean or porsche is reading it then i'm sure they're learning something out of it so <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm sure see it's not it's not for max it's for the parents it's for the parents for sure i see it yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I think I got into blockchain one. Blockchain for eight, for babies. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. See, why don't you just write a children's book, Mike? I, I'm I, I'm not. I don't think I'm good with kids, and I don't think I'm really. I don't even know. What, I don't even know what to write about if I write for children. To be honest with you. So. Well, remember, you're writing it for the parents. That's true. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I don't know what I would even write about. Like, uh, I don't Basketball. even know what topic I would want to, like have as like a a topic i don't know basketball like i don't what, what would i say about basketball yeah what, what would i say that's like not already said i like i don't yeah. it's your story that's what it's you know and i i felt that too i was like 
there's so many books already out there about the earth. Like, you know, how is mine going to be any different? Yeah, I was going to ask you this. So did you compare to your competitors that was already out there already? How do you like analyze that? I'm like, hey. I mean, little, there's, there's not that many books out there. And. Oh, uh, snap. Hillary's going to dominate the market now. She's going to no, write. Some- and they, a lot of them <laughs> kind of follow a storyline. And okay. that's something that I wasn't really following. Um, it's more just education and why and how and. Which is, I feel I feel like it's a different approach, which is fine because as long as the kid understands that and the message still sticks, and that's all that matters, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. It doesn't necessarily be a storyline. Uh, I'm sure Robert, you probably read it already, so you probably know more than me. Yeah, exactly how the book. Like, and I can I tell can, you're I, looking. I read, I read the first page, oh. and then you'll get a gist of like. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Story so that way, people, so, so that way, can the listeners can understand at that point of view? I get that. Correct. Right? Yeah. Understand. So you'll understand the title once I I read into it more. There you go. So How I Saved the Earth by Hilary Ego. We have a cute little light bulb here. Mm -hmm. Topic is save energy. I turn off the lights when leaving the room. Energy is often created from air polluting sources such as burning coal or gas. When I save energy, I reduce the demand of air polluting energy creation and help keep the air clean. There you you go. go. So easy. So now we know why we need to turn off the lights. Yep. The message it gets across. Yeah. Right away. Very efficient. Yeah. And one of the things is that it's it's just pretty straightforward, like to the point. <laughs> to the point. And there's like cute images that the kids will kids will love it. Yeah. I think adults love it too. Like I like these 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 like these guys are like so cute for sure. Where are you gonna <laughs> these, put those ones, Robert? I have no idea yet. I put my I put the water one on my laptop already. Uh-huh. Um, my other uh, my other laptop somewhere in the room. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put these. Probably on one of these bot one of my bottles and stuff. We're gonna get one of these. Yeah. So Hillary, that that paragraph, right, that that first page, right? How many how many how, how many hours you spend just doing that iteration? Just wondering, just to get that message. Like writing it. Yeah, I'm just curious. Maybe a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that much. <laughs> yeah, but you know what was actually the hardest part of writing what? was writing like the book description, writing your bio, writing. Really? Why is like, that? It just that was really hard. Writing about yourself is not easy, <laughs> and well, writing about you know you have this idea also of of your mission in your head and why you want to yeah. write this book and the description of it, but Putting writing it is harder. Yeah, harder. Yeah. yeah. So that took a lot of time actually. So. Like, why made you you pick that title? Why that title? I went through a number of different titles yeah. and give us some iterations on this that you could uh, have gone. Yeah, so I originally wanted to have you know a cute little character, and they would, the storyline would like follow the character, and I was trying to have it be an animal, and I was gonna name it a character, but then I was like, it has to be an alliteration in the name. So I was trying to Google S names because like saves. Yeah. So, and then I only wanted it to be two syllables. <laughs> so for a while, I was like, Sammy, Sammy. Really? Two course. syllable? Yeah, I just I felt like two syllables was easier um, if, I, if, if the name was going to be repeated throughout the story over and over again. And so, gotcha. um, so it was like, I can save the earth, or um, I can help save the world, or Sammy saves the earth. And then I decided I ended up liking um the how like how do i do it and so it's how i save the earth and then the actions are in there and it's saying like i do this i do that etc no uh, and <clears throat> and the reason why i was asking because i feel like the title is the hardest part because that's the hook i feel like you know what i mean yeah. that's that's like the first thing that people see and that's just a hook and the, and the key term searches people look for to be honest sometimes it matters though it really does yeah, and so you know, save the earth is a really broad term, and so is how how I save the earth. That's a broad term, and so I can only hope that my SEO will get better. And, <laughs> no, uh, no, for no, I I feel I feel like because you're targeting a certain demographic, uh, you I feel like that will just hit uh, it will automatically just narrow that down already. Um, especially yeah. that, especially that you know you if you're on Amazon Barnes and Nobles. The, the SEOs there, they purposely just rank your page up a little bit higher. Already. So yeah. yes. And then also another tip, um, I also did not link 
many things directly on any of my pages to Amazon and Barnes and Nobles because I want people to Google it. And what do you mean? Also, that way people can search for it. Yeah. So let's say that. So let's say that if I search, you know, how I save the earth. You may or may not find it, but you might have to add my name to it. Yeah, I, I figure it's Hillary first name. And uh, you are number. <laughs> I remember doing this when I saw when I saw it on uh, Instagram. I was like, I was like, oh, why didn't she link the? Why didn't she I want link people the book? to search it? I need people searching it. It's harder because, so okay. First of all, but you know I'm what? Not, they find it. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so I'm not using Google as a search engine right now. I'm actually okay, using. What are you using? Uh, Doctor yeah. Go. What? Duck, 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 why? Duck, why would you even that? do that? Because. It's a different ranking thing. I'm just curious to see. Oh, so, <laughs> so it doesn't let me look it up. How I save the earth. Okay, so so I actually I think I I searched how I save the earth in Amazon. Amazon, that's what it is. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what I that's what I searched for. So yeah, if you did Amazon, it's straight up for. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. No, if I if I search how I save the earth and Hillary, it also comes up. The first two are your book. Soon it'll be your podcast also showing up there too. There we go. Oh, that's true. Because <laughs> your last episode, it was called Save the Earth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> now it's how I save the earth now. <laughs> yeah. This episode. But, you know, like, so what's cool is I put in Save the Earth, like, Save the Earth or How I Save the Earth. And, like, images, like, you're the top three images. Oh. That's awesome, though. See, it's working. All these searches are helping. Yeah. And then so our, for- our podcast is number four on the images. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> no, and I and I feel like you know the more, um, you know, the, I feel like the more videos that you do out there, hashtags, things like that, it will definitely add up to it too. And are you planning to do a website for this? Just wondering, Hillary. What is your I game think plan? Ultimately, that is a goal. But for now, um, you know, having a full time job and this just kind of being a passion project on the side, yeah. I feel like I have it at a manageable level. And I think one day I'll, I'll broaden it. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so we are going to take a little break right now. We are going to do an extra, uh, extra image session, funny session right now. So who wants to start? Um, I'll start. Be sure you. <laughs> And you what I have is this video of this guy. Um, this just came up on my on my news feed. This came up on my news feed today. Um, it's this guy who is a lawyer, and he's he's like on a call with the judge. <laughs> is a cat? Is that a cat? What is that? <laughs> but he somehow on Zoom, his he like clicked on a like cat filter, and he didn't know how to turn it off. So, oh, so, so he's talking as a cat. Uh, so he's the cat in this. Yeah, is that? You, you, might want you can't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm here live. I'm, I'm not a cat. The title is. Here, but I'm not a cat. I have my assistant here. She's trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's talking like he's a cat, but <laughs> it's so he doesn't know how to though. turn it off. How like, long did it go on for? Uh, well, this is this clip is like thirty seconds long. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is hilarious, by the way. But yeah, nice. it's just <laughs> I saw it. I was like, oh my god, like this, this, this is what this is what happens when you have Zoom calls and people who don't know how to use it. Oh my god, that's <laughs> something, funny. something came up. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we clicked this on accident, and now. That's it. <laughs> now he's like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I swear, I'm here. I'm not a cat. I'm here live. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Hillary, you yours. Uh, okay. I don't think I told this one on my last uh, episode, but anyway. So another fun fact about me was yeah. I was also part of the Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival Queen Program where I was had the opportunity to learn a little bit more about my Japanese heritage and also give back to the local community. And so the tradition of the program is to uh, select a queen. So it is 
kind of like a pageant, but it's more of a professional development now, uh, program now as it has evolved. Yep. And so during one of our rehearsals, uh, we were actually in on stage where we were going to be performing and there's a Q&A session. And so we had to answer practice Q&A. And so the question was, um, you know, you had to do your introduction, your name, and then also um, answer the question, what's your favorite color and why? And so when I, it was my turn, I said with a very straight face, I don't think I can do it with a straight face now, <laughs> but I basically, I said, my favorite color is blue. And the reason why is because it reminds me of our oceans and our earth and our oceans make up 97% of the world's water. And like <laughs> everyone, you know, everyone else started laughing because they had like cute answers. About, <laughs> you, you just know, give facts. You just yeah, give a straight facts. Fact. And you're like, I'm, <laughs> God, I'm out. My drop. <laughs> I like red because of roses. Or <laughs> and mine was like about our water supply. Hey, you got people attention though. You say that to be honest. With you. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? It but all comes back to it. All comes back to the environment for Hillary. Yeah. Every, Basically, everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, I, I think you should do that. You do that pageant again, please, please. Just... No, it was a one-time thing. So. Yeah, do it twice. <laughs> you do it well, Mike. <laughs> Robert was there. He watched me. I was me. there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So here's my. <clears throat> uh, I kept the uh, PG. I guess this one. So. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was one of my feet. Uh, I think yesterday, today, I forgot what it was. But um, so. There's an image. Uh, it's titled "Damn." They're seriously about. There's there's they're serious about the work, and so it's an image of a fire in the background and in the highway. And then there's a road sign that says "Museum of Fire." Use the next exit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fire. It's smoke. It's like a lot of smoke. So it's it a lot like, of smoke, but it looks like look probably a fire, a fire there. Yeah. Wait, did oh, you yeah. send it? Am I supposed to be looking at it? Yeah, yeah, on our oh. podcast chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look. Yes. <laughs> Next exit, Museum of Fire. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it. <laughs> I was trying to envision it as you're describing it, and I didn't start laughing because I didn't know what you were talking about. So let me pull <laughs> it up real quick, and then maybe I will be able to see it. Uh, yeah, take, take a look at it. It's well. pretty funny. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's just like a highway picture and then the sign is museum of fire next exit. <laughs> it's just funny. Imagine you driving. Oh. Down. Like you're driving down. Do I want to check out the museum of fire? <laughs> yeah. Like that. This might be dangerous. I see it now. And kids will be like, hell yeah, mom. <laughs> <laughs> we can save the earth now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? I can, I'll go into fire another time. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's just funny that like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, oh, this is a perfect one for this, you know, so. <laughs> I should have forced you guys to have, like, funny environmental stories next time. Oh, I got plenty, I got, I got plenty of funny ones of those, especially when I came to visit you guys, so. Oh, is it going to be, uh, <laughs> I put this in the trash and Hillary started yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, okay, so I'm not sure which mall was this? And this mall had like seven different trash bins. And one of the ladies, I was about to put something in one of, this, the, one of the ROM bins, okay? And this lady started yelling at me. And I'm like, I thought literally this was not compost. This was, you know, this goes into that, oh, what's it called? What's it? It's not plastic. What's the second thing? Um, Recycling. Well, it's paper, right? But because uh, I guess there's food in it, you know, supposed to, you're supposed to go to compost, but yeah. I didn't put it in compost. I was gonna put it in paper, I guess. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So she started yelling at me out of nowhere. I'm like, where the hell did she come from? Wait, and where was this at? Is that a mall? It was at the mall. Actually, when I came to visit you two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. It wasn't but, me? No, it wasn't you. It was this, <laughs> it was like literally the mall cop lady, like literally like, I mean, maybe, I don't know, she was there for just to make sure everybody was just recycling properly. But she started just screaming at me out of nowhere. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. You know, there should be better signs for this, you know? And so I said, no, this goes to go on compost. You have to touch food in it, blah, blah, I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> but you would think that because, you know, the straw was paper. Uh, what was it? The paper plate was paper. 
Uh huh. Yeah, I don't but know. once yeah. it's contaminated, how are you gonna recycle that? Yeah. Can, can you just burn it? Oh, or yeah. how does it? No. Okay. Incineration is bad. That's true. <laughs> we need to talk about fire soon. <laughs> Mike, I can't yeah, believe I, I can't believe you did this. But anyway, this is so, why you got yelled at. Well, don't think of her as so. like being yelled at. Think of her as your guardian angel. And but no, was... it just scared me because she came out of nowhere. Like literally, yeah. she came out of nowhere though. Like I was like, man, she probably does this for everybody. I was like, you know, and I and I so I stepped back and I saw her and actually to other people too. So I wasn't the <laughs> only one. So she was just there to make sure everyone recycled properly. So, well, did you fun. learn something? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So, so you know, just compost anything that touches food. That's it. You also yep. learned not to use that exact trash can. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go somewhere else so you don't get yelled at. <laughs> no, but it's funny though. But I, I, I mean, I, at least I wasn't the only one making the same mistake. Literally, like I saw like three, four people literally making a similar mistake. Mm -hmm. Just like me. Yeah. So, I think for that sure. just shows that um, you know we need to increase our education and outreach efforts. Oh, hundred percent agree. More people should read How I Save the Earth. And... There we go. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Let me ask, so pivoting to, you know, a little bit of off topic, um, you know, talking about saving the earth, right? You know, we've gone through the pandemic, right? And I feel like this is something maybe, uh, you know, we could touch base on, but um, obviously, you know, we had to create a, a lot of masks and stuff like that for people to use, things like that. And to me, like, I don't know, I see heartbreaking when people throw masks in the parking lot, things like that, and gloves and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I can't help it. I pick it up and just put it in trash and stuff, but still, like, it's still in, in the street, you know? And so, like, how do you tell people how do you handle those things? Yeah, yeah, any advice for that? Yeah, it's okay. tough. I mean, listen, yeah. it's, it's the same. Tough. It's the same as like people who are throwing their like cigarette butts on the ground and gub on the ground, and like it's like yeah. people like just littering for no reason. Yeah, uh, right. Like so, I we are in a pandemic, you know, and yes, yeah. there, it is a mask, but as Robert said, it's no different than any other litter that unfortunately gets thrown onto the ground. So yeah. I would say, don't be afraid to stand up and say something. Mm -hmm. I sure do. And so what do you tell people to do with the mask? Do you tell them to compost that? I just say, excuse me, you dropped something. And they usually look at it. And if they play dumb, I say, can you please pick it up and throw it away? Because masks are trash, actually. They're trash? Yeah. That's crazy. And how about like cloth mask? Um, cloth, there are textile recycling yeah. that does take place. Um, but um, unless you are able to connect with a textile recycler, then they're going to be trash. trash as well. Yeah. I thought I guess cloth masks are reused. They do last longer because you could wash them. Yeah. For sure. And how about those plastic gloves? Because I've seen that a lot, like at gas stations and stuff. Was a trash. It's really hard. It is tough. Yeah. Um, and you know, global health is important too. And yeah, of course. That. It's about I mean, there has to be a, some kind of at least. I mean, I feel like they, you would think that they would put more education on how to handle stuff, those kind of stuff though as well. And obviously, you buy masks, right? Like, hey, make sure you dispose it correctly, right? I feel like they haven't emphasized that at all. At least personally, I haven't seen. So I've seen some, but I agree. I think there could be more that's done. Yeah. Where do you want to see that done? Like, where do you want to see that education? When they buy it or when? When they, when they buy on it, the even a box, on, you know, I mean, even on the box, or on the TV, like it's a constant reminder, right? You know, how do you just make sure, you know. But what if it gets to the point, just like how you're super annoyed with COVID vaccine commercials and people are talking about Wait, it. Have you seen vaccine commercial? I've seen one or two, but like uh, you, you're super, I all. you're super, com you, you've been saying how like you're so, upset with all of these like vaccine uh people talking about the vaccine and all this stuff and pushing it where like you're seeing it all the time what if like yeah if you saw this all the time it'd be super annoying as well like what but i feel like the reward of that though like it's still like it would educate people more right would you, you would you want it to be like the uh the cigarette commercials where it's like super annoying but it's in your head yeah it's in your head it makes you second guess it that's why this comes down to like one from oh, littering. You should write a book about it. Yeah, Robert, you should write a book about it. Me? Where, where did this come from? <laughs> You're the one with the idea. What you see in the world? Yeah. No, like you, you know what I'm saying though. Like I read, I'd rather be people think second guess what their action is than just them just do it without being aware. Okay, this is, has a consequence, right? 
at least they know that this is going to trash then go into the ground polluting. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a, also a lot, like it costs money to do all of that advertising and the yeah, of outreach and stuff. Yeah. So they have to put that in as like well, a as a plan, as part of their plan of how they're going to react to this, right? So yeah. maybe maybe like when we have our like stimulus bill, they should have that as included in part. You should have done that from the very beginning, though. Yeah. Regardless. You know, instead of adding a lot of those extra crap. No, but like, where, honestly, like where, like we're doing it from the beginning. Um, where would they get the funding, or where would they, where would they start, right? Like they, they got funding for a lot of stuff. In the guys, day. we're going yeah. off topic. We're trying to talk about saving the earth. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are going off topic a little bit, though. Yeah, but you know, but no, but I'm saying, like at the end of the day, I, I, it's just I feel like with that kind of messaging, it should make an impact, regardless, from, at least away from polluting more. You know. And you were, yes, we're in the middle of pandemic. Uh, I feel like, but that's more reason why we should do be more considerate. Mm -hmm. So, definitely things to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that's sure. For sure that's for sure, though. Yeah. So, hey, Lyric, all right. So, going back to your book for a second, I did. I, I was I was thinking about this during actually during the extra embassy session. So when you, uh, when you when you wrote, you know, each of those pages, right? Like, did you worry about how long the book could be or how short the book could be? I'm just curious. Um, no, because I only had my, you know, certain number of characters and my plan was to have one character for spread. And then in terms of the text, I also just was editing the text on like the, the PowerPoint that I had like yeah. my, my spread on. So I knew- so each slide happened. like a page? Uh, so each slide I had like the left side and the right side. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, so it's like so it's like two pages. That's what you're saying. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for Ingram Spark, you need to have a minimum number of pages too. So that's also something to consider. What is what is it? Like ten pages? Uh, Twenty pages? Eighteen. Eighteen pages? Yeah. Minimum so eighteen pages. Put it like a bio, a blank page, so I can sign it. Oh, <laughs> okay. So so so, so that, that's a very quickly though. It's eighteen pages. Yes. But it, it, you know, it adds up quickly. So. Yeah, it adds up very quickly yeah. for sure. Yeah, because especially if it's both sides, so that's one and two already. And then all you need is nine more, like each of the same thing. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying though. Yeah, so you can also model it knowing that you have to meet that minimum as well. Gotcha. No, because I feel like, you know, let's say that, you know, if it's too short, sometimes you feel like, oh, I got to write more now, right? And then mm -hmm. you got to just dig a little bit more. And then at that point, would that story or that book become less, you know, Intricate, I guess you can say, right? And or if you write too short, like, yeah, okay, does this, this book's provide the value that I'm trying to provide or not? I I, I would have second guess like that, to be honest. Though. But you just gotta go for it. I think that's what I had a hard time getting over that hump that really? you're talking about. Is you know like, oh, what about this? What about that? Someone's gonna say something about this, you know? So I what made you click publish? Then what what this made you decide to click? Okay, I'm gonna publish this now. Like I really just wanted to get it done by the end of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and i did that's true so, it, it was it was like released like it says like december 27th yep oh so you right did it what this so how long how many days did it take to do to release this one right um right. to be like online yeah i think it took about two or three days until i found really that fast mm -hmm. two or three days so that means you released it on christmas day or christmas eve no i pressed publish on the 27th Oh, so wait, but, but Robert, you said that you was, it was on Amazon on the 27th? Well, no, it says December 27th, 2020 as like the date published. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So it, so it counts from that timestamp. That's what I said. Okay, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that was like another driver was like, I really want to get this done and like say that I accomplished this in 2020. Hey, you have four extra days. You, you were on time. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. We're way early. Yeah. Way early. I would have procrastinated. <laughs> four or five days to go online yeah. i think i remember looking on christmas eve and i didn't yeah. see it so i, I would have waited until there. december 31st to click that publish button december 31st. 11 59 <laughs> <laughs> right so, but yeah maybe um if you're if you're stuck set a goal for yourself um for a date and a time you also want to push to get it out there because yeah. Mine was by the end of 2020. And Did you have like a little mini goals along the way? Like for example, hey, I'm gonna get two pages done today, two pages done tomorrow. No, because I was working on this basically in my evenings after I was done with work. Yep. And 
Yeah, it was kind of just whenever I had time, I would open it up and work on a little bit here and there. I even would go like weeks without working on it. I think by the time I started working on it around October. And so it took me um, from October until December to finish it. That's not too long at all, though, to like no, write a book. I, I feel like and also like, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think just doing this, like pushing forward and, and doing it, I think is, is the biggest hump for a lot of stuff. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, like this podcast, like we've been talking about doing a podcast for years and then just, for years, come on. It was at least at least a year and a half that we were talking about. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I used and then, to yeah. Uh, yeah, so like we we're just talking about, oh, we should do a podcast. Yeah, we I remember to do a podcast. Yeah, I remember blah, blah, blah. we talked about it when I went to visit you for the first time and we watched PK, like, you know. Yeah, when was that? Yeah. That was years ago. That was years ago. That was years. What man. was that? that 2016? Was... 17? Yeah, it's 2021 oh. now. That's four years. Wait, has it been that long? <laughs> That's at least four <laughs> years. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we were talking about it for years, and then like really just like going and doing it, like we'll decide, yeah. okay, let's just do it. It doesn't yeah. matter if we know or don't know how to do it. Yeah. Like once you put your mind figure to it, it to do yeah. it, it'll you'll figure it exactly. out. Exactly. See, guys, we we both accomplished something in twenty twenty. Yeah, that's true. I I did my my goal for twenty twenty. I was like figured out how to better get better communication. I feel like you know there's no way I was asking how. It, how do you wrote your book and how do you, you know, think about, you know, how many times iteration you went with it? Because I feel like storytelling is, is the art, right? And being an efficient storyteller, it goes a long, long, long way. And especially children, like, let me tell you, they will absorb everything you think of. And you got to make sure you're like delivered that on point, very simple, very, you know, my, my, without them questioning at you twice, because if they question stuff, you know, I feel like sometimes it's just, you know, like you, you're, you're gonna start questioning yourself sometimes, you know. <laughs> like, oh my god, oh, Mike, you know? on the book, you're not there to answer the question, right? So, <laughs> but you're the parent, on, though. That's, but on, you're the par- that's on the that's parents true. to answer. That's the the parents. <laughs> so, it really doesn't affect you at all. <laughs> but then you gotta get feedback from your parents, you know. <laughs> yeah, the parents will come back, and then you'll be like, all right, this is what I meant, and then you can tell this to your kids. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. are you? Are you gonna? So obviously, as part of your marketing plan, Hillary, have you thought about having like a little live read with parents and stuff like that? Just wanting like on, on like a Zoom and stuff. I think that's a great idea. Um, I would like to do that in the future. Yeah. I have not scheduled it, but if you have any tips on how to do that, yeah, yeah. do a book tour and everything, you know, so virtually a virtual book tour. <laughs> yeah, virtual, yeah, book, virtual book, tour. book tour. Yeah, yeah. this is your great first. Idea. This is your first stop. Podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, there you that's go. a really good idea. Yeah. yeah, you can do a book tour. I'm sure, think about this, right? Like uh, in the local library, perhaps, they may want to support that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm sure, you know, like, especially working for local government, I'm sure, you know, people out there, they probably know people. And so, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, it, you know, it's eventually, you know, when we get back to out there meeting people in front of the office type of deal, I sometimes maybe just maybe easier, but virtually, you know, you can do what you can do right now. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, what's your book tour? For sure. I love it. Yeah, yeah you no, talk I'll to, definitely... You could talk to like your, uh, I don't know if you have any friends who are like teachers and stuff. That oh, yeah, they teachers. Might, they might uh-huh. have, uh, might be able yeah. to be like, oh yeah, this is a good book to. Hey, me, for hey Robert, Mich- Michelle is a, te- a great teacher. That's true, Michelle. We, yeah. Michelle was on our podcast. She's a third grade teacher, third grade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she gets. She well, could... if she needs a, a book reading in her class. Yeah, yeah she might need that. <laughs> no, I would, I would, I'll, I'll forward that to her for sure. Yeah, I'd be happy yeah. to do one. All right, so um, we're gonna wrap this episode up, and uh, we're gonna end with our rant. Yeah, who wants to start? Do you guys remember what I said during our last visit? Yeah, she said she said uh, our rants should also include a way to oh, yeah. do uh, make to, things better or like better, a call to better. action. That's true. Yes, I have one, so which is good. So, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I want to go last because mine's, it's, it's about myself. <laughs> so, uh, so go ahead, Robert. You want to go first? Mine's also about myself. Um, <laughs> I am tired of COVID. Um, <laughs> finally, I think I think I'm officially like done with being in, inside, right? So, like, you get to this point in in your life where you're. Uh, where you're, when you're inside for too long and then you're like tired all the time and I think I got there this weekend where I I just sat down and like I just did not want to get up because I'm just tired of it like 
and you just don't feel exhausted just being awake right so then um yeah i'm like now i'm like pushing myself to to leave the house because i think getting some fresh air moving around it helps helps that whole like mentality, mentality. right yeah um so that's that's what i've been that's what i've been working on is leaving the house more because i just haven't been doing that at all during this this time getting get, getting some vitamin d and k in it, you know a little bit so uh i went outside when it was dark but, <laughs> yeah something, that's fair. something that's like fair. that like starting start, just getting outside is, is good and moving around good so, so you have yeah, a goal to get outside like every day yeah no it's gonna be like uh every hour no no <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna start with once a week because i haven't even done that um uh but like yeah it's probably be a couple of times a week and then maybe maybe i'll maybe i'll go once a day i don't know like it's so hard to get out once a day uh listen i do it i have well, a goal if you need to order food yeah. you just go pick up pick it up food. there you go and walk there no yeah. that's not gonna that's not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> um because like it there. takes it takes it'll take like 20 minutes 30 minutes to get there so uh to like go there and back and i'm like no i i'm like i'd rather be working you work your appetite up by the time you get there you're hungry you know yeah i don't know <laughs> we're trying to help you robert something to think about that's all i'm saying you know i mean i have a goal just to work out minimum 15 20 minutes a day for the rest of the year every single day that's what i'm doing mm -hmm. so i'm on day 40 so 40 days straight so far so. we're already 40 days into the new year yeah i know yeah Isn't that crazy hillary Oh. Yeah, 2021 I, is flying. I, I, I'm counting this. Like, I'm like, I cannot wait to get the first quarter out of the way because I'm like exhausted already. <laughs> You're tired of of working out once a day. Yeah, well, it just days? adds up, right? It adds up. So at least minimum 15 to 20 minutes, and I, you know, I set some standards. Where, hey, you know what? My average heart rate has to be 125 or above ish or so, and things like that. So like at least 15 20 minutes, you know. So. I mean, but last year out. you were doing push-ups for every day or something, right? Like, I mean, that was the year before, yeah. 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 So, like, this isn't anything. It's harder. I feel like. You think this is harder because it compounds. Like, but my heart when I was doing push-up, my heart was not going up one twenty-five average. You know, I was take, I was doing like 20, 30, you know, forty, and then take a break. 30, 40, take a break, have a deal. You know, I did it between lunchtime or did it during meeting time. Mm, you know, things I like see, that. I so, see. Flying, you know, and playing things like that. You know, airport. So. I see. I see. Yeah. I guess. I guess. I guess it's it's more work to do yeah. it to have a heart rate. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Haley, what's yours? Uh, let's see. I think now that I live really close to the the beach. Yeah. Uh, my rant will be plastic beach toys and people leaving like their trash on the beach. Oh, you see it's that a lot? Like it's, it's so strange where I'm like, why would you do this? But I see it all the time. But do they forget about it? They just lost it? Or it's just because yeah, they, they just leave it there? Or no, the they toys leave it. They leave it there. They leave their trash there. Are, are these tourists, you think? Um, They're probably tourists, yeah. yeah. But, but still, like, I just, I don't understand. I feel like there's a lot of education. But it just makes me realize maybe we need more education on the impact. Or they don't, of or they don't care. But see, I want to change that. I want no, but like she's saying, education will help people care. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'm, mean, I'm just saying, like, do you think like they just do a purpose? They don't care, or someone pick it up, you know, type of deal like that. They might, yeah. I, I don't really know what's going on in their head, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Have you want... seen it live in action? Like, hey, someone just walked away from it. I don't think so. No, okay. I usually just. It. or i might have been sitting there and i noticed people are gone and i might notice later Got that it. they left trash there and they're already gone and instead of me leaving it there like complaining about it i go over you there pick it up. It yeah up. yeah of course i mean um it's but kind of i just it really yeah. bothers me how people are really inconsiderate and i i really want to help change that yeah are you, gonna start, are, you start, are you gonna start leaving signs at the entrance of the beach maybe i could no seriously i'm not kidding <laughs> Yeah, I started watching this uh, YouTuber who he's in. He's an Australian guy, and he does like these uh, survival challenges, like where he doesn't he brings nothing and just like goes and fishes for his for his like for food and water and stuff. Um, yeah. And he's in. I, I think he's Australian, but he's he was traveling to Thailand before uh, COVID, and now he's like there for a while. But like mm -hmm. he'll go to like these little islands, and he'll go and there's like 
every time the 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 high tide Wait. comes in, like oh, there, like there will be so much trash along, and he like sits there and like he'll like, like you see it like every video. He's just like, I can't believe there's this much trash, and it's just like beaches full of trash. So it just along. washes up. That's so. It just crazy. washes up, and it's all. It's a lot of it is like these plastic uh, cups that like uh, I, I guess in Asia they have these plastic cups where they just like poke it and like drink it. And then they just like throw it. Oh, I know you're talking about like almost, almost like a bubble tea one. Like it looks like a bubble tea cup, but it's like these are like yeah. regular waters that they that they have. Yeah. And then um and then he also like explained how some of them, uh like the fishermen, even like even the fishermen, they use like plastic as like their for for like bait or something. Like they really? tie it to like their their to their fishing stuff. And then if the and then they just tear it off. And like and throw it away, throw, and throw it in the water. And throw it in the water when it's done. Like that's oh. that's what they do. And he's and he was like, "Oh man, why do you do this? Like why why do you do this? It's like this is bad." And yeah. then, but they don't even like, they don't even register that it's that it's bad. Bad for because they just <clears throat> no one's ever told them, right? Like they're just that's like, for sure though. This a- is like Asia- what we grew up to. Like this is how we grew up and fished, right? This the is the Southeast doing. Asia for sure, man. I I went over to Thailand. Let me tell you, there uh, was an island I went to. I remember seeing like every morning there's trash in the beach mm-hmm. every morning. Like, and I see trucks obviously come pick it up, things like that, clean up. But you can see it wash wash on though. Like it was pretty bad. When I saw yeah. It. So, well, yeah, working on it, guys. Yep. Uh, well, mine is about also about myself. Um, so I'm taking improv class right now, Ooh. and what we're doing emotional uh, reactions. So this t- instructor who said, "Hey, listen." you think about how you're going to react emotionally, but I want you to level it times 10, like go extreme with it, you know? So I'm being Asian, I'm, you know, being Asian, most, most of us are not emotional at all. And we don't show express. I speak it for myself, but I don't like express my emotions very well, or I don't express my emotion at all at all. So there are a couple of scenes where like, you know, I was supposed to be like, uh, pretending to be hurt or something like that. And and I was just mad at myself. Like I, I just couldn't do it. I was like, I was like, I couldn't act it out. Like I was, I, I was like being hurt. You couldn't act like and, you were hurt. Like you stuck yeah, your I just, toe or whatever. Like no, like, like for example, like, I was holding my balls. So I'm walking like ah, oh, you know, hurting. And then and, and and then the instructor was like, "What are you doing? Like you need to act like it. You are more hurt." I'm like more hurt than that. I'm like how do you act like more? <laughs> so I started grabbing my balls like ah, this shit hurts. You know. <laughs> so like, but I just didn't feel comfortable doing it. Right. And, and I think part of it is because maybe perhaps, you know, I don't really act on my emotion as, as much as I should be. And so, so I, so then the next scene, I had to act like I was dis- uh, disappointed. Mm. I'm like, how do you act like you're disappointed, like to an extreme level? Like, so I started, oh, this shit sucks. Oh, or. That's what you said. That's how. <laughs> That's how I don't know how to do it. And, 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 like, and, and the guys and the instructor was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh man, this shit sucks. Yeah. That's my that's my times ten of my normal my normal. <laughs> so like so I was kind of frustrating myself a little bit. And then the next scene was like act like you're super happy and perky that you just won the lot or to big deal, like you know, or like you know, just something happy perky. Like, woohoo. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, let's go. And it's like, what you just what, what are you doing? Like <laughs> so it was just I don't know. I struggle with that and I and I feel like Part of what makes you know improv really good is you touch into your inner emotion, you just act on it instantly, and it makes that scene super more, uh, more, more, I guess more live and more relatable, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and then that person gets a feedback energy from you and they react on it. Mm-hmm. So, so if I don't do that well, I feel like sometimes obviously I'm not doing it justice to my to my partner that's on stage with me. So I felt that like I was kind of frustrated with myself a little bit on that. So I didn't get, I got, I get maybe perhaps got too much into myself. So, mm. so yeah. what I'm going to do is work on, it's more like, I guess part of my routine is just, you know, just not to overthink it. I just go with it a little bit more, but it's easier to set it to be done. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Like if you ask me like how to, like, to do that stuff, I don't know. I might act like bigger a little bit, but yeah. still it's like, it seems abnormal. It feels abnormal. It feels, un- it feels uncomfortable. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable. And, just, and it's hard not to try to laugh at it while you're on stage. <laughs> That's true. You yeah. Know? Uh, and so it's like, I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like throughout the night, the two hours away, and I was like, man, I was like, I was, that was like the most frustrating class I've been in. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It'll get but better, Mike. Fun. You just got to practice. It's, it's fun. It's fun for sure. 
Yeah. You awesome. Get it. Awesome. Well, Hillary, uh, thanks for coming on. We're happy yeah, to have you back it. on. Uh, yeah. What do you want to pimp? So tell us. Uh, tell us. Tell everyone. us the audience, please. Yes. What do I what? Tell what everyone what you want to pimp. Pimp. Yeah. Yo, what, what do you want to promote? What do you want to? Oh. <laughs> you never heard that before, Hillary. You know, I don't use words like Blanks. that. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone should go check out my book, How I Saved the Earth. It, yeah, please Google it. Yeah, Google it. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no <laughs> link. <my> SEO. <laughs> do you want? Wait, um, do you want us to not put the link either on the of, no, to the book? Don't. <laughs> yeah. okay. but you can find her on her instagram above okay please yeah yes at how i save the earth yep and uh order a sticker put it on your reusable water bottle just like this or you and know, like this right here yeah or yeah. get a sweatshirt or a hat again this is a great gift gift for your friends gift for uh you know your nieces and nephews you name it yeah it's not just for kids, for parents too as well. So for everybody, yeah. yeah. Um, and so so for everybody out there watching uh on YouTube, we want you to smash that like button, subscribe to listen to more podcasts. And if you're listening on Apple Music or uh any of the podcast apps, then you can just go and leave us a comment, leave us a rating, um, and that'll help us out. And also don't forget to check out our website, www.gfodots.com. Yep. More episodes. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, Hillary. Congratulations again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. We'll expect, you know, second book by the time you come back. So, yeah. <laughs> my God. I'll see right. you guys in seven months. There we go. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. Until next time. See you. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Gluten Free Organic Thoughts Podcast. As always, we appreciate you. If you are watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this episode, and leave us a comment. If you are listening to us, please leave us your honest review on your preferred podcast listening platform. And as always, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GFOT Thoughts. Drop a comment and give us some feedback. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, see you then.